Hi. Um, I suppose after um, just the, the last run of ladies, um, I guess I'm um, the font of experience having just recently retired. Um, but uh, I have something in common with, I think, everyone there that um, I enjoyed my history right from the start. I enjoyed school, which is often something that people don't really want to uh, actually admit to. And like them, I actually had an, an inspiring history teacher. And um, I had the, the um, luck of having him for both ancient and modern history when I was at high school. Um, and I remember his name too. His name was Toby Rudolph. Uh, and given my age and his when he was teaching, um, although I don't know it, he's probably dead by now. Um, but, but Toby w was one of those people who had that ability to actually inspire you. Um, he would just say things that made you take notice. Um, he would set you some assignment that was really interesting. Um, he would actually talk to you and talk to you in a reasonable way, which probably uh, in the 1960s when you're in high school and in a boys' high school on the northern beaches, you probably didn't get talked to very often like that. Um, Toby also had some, own, some of his own artefacts, his car. Um, he had this rather large American vehicle that looked like it was already 50 years old in 1968. So um, I have no idea what it was, but it was certainly inspired uh, one to think about, um, you know, the prospect of owning one of those when you actually went out to work. But um, history, history had always been my passion. Um, uh, I didn't quite get under the bed covers with the torch, but I certainly used to sit on the lounge for hours and just read uh, history and historical novels. Um, and I got to that point very early in my school career where I thought, well, what am I going to do? Well, the only thing I can do with history is teach. Well, I like that. Well, I like going to school, so I'm probably going to like teaching. Um, and so, I sort of made that decision fairly early in my life that I was going to teach. Um, I wasn't always that confident that I would be a good teacher, um, but my first prac teaching at Ramwick Boys, um, I actually got through that and at the end of that I thought, yeah, I can do this, yep, you know, this won't be too bad at all. Um, so then I started on a long career of different places. Uh, country New South Wales, out of Western Sydney, inner Western Sydney, l leafy lower North Shore, um, all over the place. Selective high schools, uh, boys high schools, girls high schools, comprehensive high schools, lower socioeconomic high schools. And yes, I too taught in Mount Druitt at the wonderful Shalvey High or as we used to call it affectionately, Salvo High, um, when there were 1,700 kids and um, you, needed, you needed to hold onto the chair. Um, so you might sort of say, OK, why did you stay with teaching for 37 years? Because um, in the end, when I got up in the morning to go to work, I liked the idea of going to work. I like the idea of going to school to work. Um, I like to be with the people that I taught with, and I liked, in the main, most of the students that I taught. Um, and I'll tell you three very quick stories about students to give you the whole range. Um, I did have the pleasure of teaching a student who came first in the state in ancient history, and that was a great pleasure. I also, in the last ancient history class that I taught, taught a student, a girl from country New South Wales, um, who most people had written off and thought, oh, you know, she'll struggle to get 50%. Well, in the HSC, Alice got 63. 
And that was great. And Alice was over the moon with that too. And why? Well, I'd like to, I'd like to think that I had a little bit to do with that. But I'd also like to think that she was able to learn enough from being in the classroom to push her through. And the last one is a guy who I taught really early on, and I don't even remember his name, it's so long ago. But um, it used to be a struggle for him to write more than a paragraph. So every day we had history, um, we'd have a chat, we'd talk about the football, uh, we'd talk about a few other things. We'd, um, I'd sort of say, yeah, you know, do you think you might be able to do that little task there? Oh, yes, sir, probably can. Okay, thanks. So you go away and do it and come back and he'd have done it. And that's good. So we talk a bit more about football and we talk a bit more about music. And um, that was probably all he wrote for the day. But the trouble is in every other class, he either wasn't there or he wasn't doing anything. He wasn't even getting out his books. So I figured that, you know, um, I had a win for me and a win for him in the sense that, you know, we were able to actually do something. Um, why ancient history? Well, in what other subject can you get to the school at seven in the morning, get a shovel, go out to the long jump pit, unload all the sand, seed it with broken bits of pottery and, and stuff, fill it all in, and then come back about third period and uh, for your double period with ancient history and, you know, get some string and wire out the grid and, you know, do all these sorts of nice things, you know. Um, those are the sorts of really interesting things that you can't do in many other subjects. I do remember one year we were two artefacts short, but fortunately no one got injured at the athletics carnival, so <laughs> I must have buried them too deep. Um, I think Students always found ancient history more interesting than other things that they did. Um, and I think that's to do also with all those practical sorts of things that you can do. But I think one of the other things that we do, and someone touched a little bit on it, was that when you look at the ancient history course, we do look a lot more at ancient society. And I think that's a really interesting part of ancient history. If you look at the modern history syllabus, you're looking at politics and more politics. And just to throw a little bit in, a little more politics. And I think often students just think, I'd just like to know a bit more about people and a bit more about how they live rather than, you know, about um, who they've shot. Um, but when you're out there, remember it's not always a paradise, you have to be practical. And this is where um, my sort of, um, the way I've always taught, which has always been in a much more practical and down to earth way. Um, it's not always a paradise teaching, but um, at the end of the day, there's always a, uh, many things to stimulate you and many things that you could look back on and think I've really achieved something. And it's not all the marking you're going to do, because if you're doing ancient history, there's lots of writing to mark, um, unlike, unlike the um, PE teachers. <laughs> um, and you will have difficult students, but you'll also have great students as well. Um, and even some of the difficult students don't end up too bad. Um, but if, I, if teaching ancient history and teaching um, suits you, it's going to stimulate you, um, it'll invigorate you, you'll have a sense of achievement, um, and you'll have a sense of satisfaction. And you won't get that working in a bank. Thank you.